So at the risk of some danger, I want to invite you to think back a year ago, right now, right now, a year ago. What was it like for you? I wouldn't say for all of us, but for most of us, we had just come out of uh, that busy uh, holiday season, Thanksgiving, where we had everybody over, and then the Christmas season with all the hustle and bustle, and then always my favorite part with all the Christmas Eve services and the chance to celebrate that way, and then Christmas Day when, when we, you know, had all the food and all the gifts and all the family and all the celebration, and now here we are a couple of days after that, a year ago, and I mean, we are stuffed, you know, stuffed with family and friends and gifts and food. That was a year ago. (laughs) Looking into what New Year's resolutions we might have. Simple little things like, you know, I'm going to cut my toenails more often this year, or I'm going to lose a little weight, or I'm going to exercise more, or I'm I'm going to find something new to do. You know, those were the big deal things we were thinking about. That was a year ago. A year ago. (laughs) Wow. Look where we are now. A global pandemic, uh, racial injustice and strife exploding out in our city streets, an election season that's been not like any other we've seen in our lifetime. A lot of uncertainty, a lot of ambiguity, a lot of stress. Thanksgiving was different. Ours was much quieter. Some of the folks we normally have with us had COVID, couldn't come. We've got parents who are being more cautious. They couldn't come. uh, One of our kids was traveling and it was just different. It was different. And then the holiday season, not that same sense of hustle and bustle. In fact, for me, honestly, it feels like kind of Christmas came and gone and it's over and what really happened? We didn't even do ham or turkey this year. We did lasagna. Why not? It's just different. Really different. But piled on top of that, really, isn't just the things we missed out on, the normal things we thought we'd do. It's all the extra weight that so many have felt through this season. For those of you who've been around LifeBridge, you've heard me say before, whenever there's trouble, it seems to throw hooks out and grab a whole bunch of other stuff. And boy, this year has had all the hooks we could ever want or need. And it has added a lot of, a lot of weight. So now what? You know, this week between Christmas and New Year's was always kind of this lost week, it seemed like, wasn't it? Everything had quieted down. Things hadn't quite ramped up. We were finishing one year. We were heading into a new year. All the hustle and bustle of a holiday season was done. And now we were headed into what does the future look like? And we're kind of still caught in that no man's land space, aren't we? Only it's not from Christmas to New Year's. It feels like we've been in that spot for a long time. And so I want to look at just a couple of practical suggestions, but I want to dial back to where we just came out of this Christmas season. And if you have your Bibles, I want to invite you to look over, you know, jump on your phone, uh, over what we find in, in the book of uh, Matthew. Here's what we read. Matthew chapter 1, I'm going to start in verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And that was Joseph's COVID year. Uh, Here he is. He's on the mountaintop. I mean, he is he is uh, about to uh, launch uh, this new life. They were getting married. He was a carpenter. Maybe he was setting up his business. And now there was this census thing and they had to go back to their hometown. But he was going to get to see relatives and it was going to be awesome. And they were getting ready for that trip and the plans for the wedding and all the feasts that would come with that. And, And now... He finds out his fiance, his soon wife to be, the one he loves, the one he trusts, the one he's placed his future in, is saying to him, got some news, not so good. Well, actually, it is kind of good news. I'm pregnant, but but wait, (laughs) man, what a confusing time for Joseph. And here's how it goes on. 
Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quick, quietly. I love that about Joseph. He, he was going to adhere to what the custom and the rule and the law was, uh, that because she was now pregnant before they'd gotten married, even though it was a legal contract, so they were like they were married, he would have to divorce her as if they'd been married. He wasn't going to make a big deal about it. He was just going to be quiet. He wanted to protect her honor, didn't want to bring her to shame or public disgrace. That says something about Joseph, doesn't it? But after he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She'll give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. First, Joseph gets news he doesn't want. And then an angel shows up and gives him news he doesn't quite understand. <laughs> hey, don't divorce her. Marry her. Take her as your bride. Because what is conceived in her is from God. And he'll be the Savior, the Messiah, the one you have been looking for. Promising. Can you imagine how confusing? Now he's on this overload of information. You know, I'm one of those night processor guys. I lay in bed and things flip over and over and over in my head. And the truth be told, oftentimes for me, the, the things I'm flipping over don't seem to get better or come to a solution. Sometimes they do, but often I, I create all the worst possible scenarios. Can you imagine him laying here the rest of that night wondering what is going on? What is happening? trying to process all this data. Let's suppose I said to you, when I got up this morning, it was 40 degrees in my house. You know, you might say to me, man, Rick, you guys should like get a furnace. You should get some heat going. And I said, well, it actually, it wasn't 40 degrees Fahrenheit. It was 40 degrees Celsius. So that meant the temperature in my house was actually 104. You would be saying to me, well, why don't you open some windows or get some air conditioning going? But what if I said it actually wasn't the house temperature, it was the temperature of somebody in my house. You might say to me, well, you better be careful. You know, COVID is going around. Maybe you've been exposed. But if I said to you, actually, it was my new six-month-old grandson, Braden, who had 104 temperature, you'd already be dialing 911 on my behalf. And what changed? What changed was the data you receive, the information you receive. What's changing for Joseph right here is he has a plan. First, the plan is all about his future and excitement. Then the plan gets shifted, but he's capable and he shifts with the plan and he makes a new plan. But now he's got more info. And it's the one data point that changed the world, didn't it? And so Joseph hears the angel. He trusts God. He and Mary make their way to Bethlehem. A baby is born. And the world changed. The rest is history. And the birth of that child changed me. And I hope it's changed you. You know, we've had a terrible year. There's no way of getting around that. Look what Joseph did. He wakes up. He did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He took Mary home as his wife. He didn't consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Joseph acted on what he could see and what he could know. And you know, we're invited to do the very same thing. There's a lot of unknown, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of sustained stress and continued ambiguity, which is a cocktail for high anxiety or deep depression. There's a lot that we don't know. But what are we going to do? Here we are. We're in between 2020 and 2021 in an uncertain season. What are you going to do? Well, I want to make just a couple of actionable suggestions. Joseph acted on what he could know and could do, and I think you and I can do the same. First is this. Let the past be the past. You know, the pandemic ushered in a lot of things for us. Some of you have had COVID. Some of you have lost loved ones to COVID. 
Some of you have had your work interrupted, impacted. Some of you have lost your jobs. Some of you have had relationship shifts because COVID raised up a bunch of issues in a marriage or in a family or in a friendship. Some of us have had our world kind of flipped on end in a lot of different ways. Some of us are experiencing a lot of new stuff. We're all having to learn how to use Zoom, right? And how do we find that mute button or unmute button? And, 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 and think about the rhythms in our life that have changed. Do you know what I was doing pre-COVID isn't actually the same routine I have now all these months later. What about the isolation? I mean, I, I, am, I am loving that Dine and I have never had these many days in a row together. Never have we had this many meals sitting at home. Never have I traveled as infrequently as I've been traveling uh, the last uh, bunch of months now. And I love Diane. And, and it's improved our relationship. It's helped it grow. But I also know there have been moments where, boy, that just me and her together and, you know, no friends, no family. Isolation's been an issue for a lot of us. Grief. Loss as the world, how we knew it, understood it, could manage it, navigate it, accept it. And we would be remiss to not recognize that there has been a lot, a lot of stress in this. And as I said, sustained stress and combined ambiguity, man, that's a, that's a cocktail for a lot of wrong stuff in our lives. So my first suggestion is simply to let the past be the past. Here's what the Apostle Paul says in the book of Philippians. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Do you know, we can either dwell on what has been, all the things that have gone wrong. And you know, I end up in a lot of calls with leaders, business leaders, pastors, um, uh, conferences, been speaking at a lot of virtual conferences. And Almost always there's a, there's a start to, boy, this has been a hard year. This has been a tough year. This has been a difficult year. And the truth is it is. But there's kind of some moments where I'm, I, I'm tired of being reminded of that. And maybe one of the things I can do is recognize that those things that got disrupted for me this past year, there is nothing that is going to dial my clock back a year and I'm going to regain, recapture, change, somehow get that back. The past is the past. Paul says, the one thing I'm doing is forgetting what is behind me and I'm going to strain towards what it has because I think there's still some strain for us in this. There's some effort involved in me trying not to look backwards at all the things that I didn't like have gone wrong, that I've missed, how my world's changed. Rather, how am I straining towards what is ahead? You know, all of us, whether it's at this global level of a pandemic that all of us are experiencing that storm or it's your own personal past that's an issue for you, all of us need to quit hoping for a better past. We're not going to get one. You know, there's been four questions that I've been asking business leaders and uh, pastors uh, in the last six months. And here, here they are. The first is this. What have you lost that needs to stay lost? I think that's a good question for us. So in this last nine months, what have you lost that needs to stay lost? Maybe there's some things that you were doing pre-COVID that you didn't do because of the shutdowns or because of uh, your job situation or health or whatever it is, that in this pandemic, what have you lost that should stay lost? What are some things that you shouldn't be doing? You don't wanna go back and capture those things again. Here's the second question. It's the opposite question. What have you found that needs to stay found? The truth is I've found some new rhythms in my life that actually are beneficial to me. I found that me needing to be on the run 24 seven probably isn't as healthy as I once thought it was to sustain me. I found that actually uh, digging in to my most meaningful relationships matters the most. What have you found that needs to stay found? What is it that that you need to welcome back 
whenever we get back to whatever we get back to after a vaccine and after, 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 which we're never going to see normal like whatever normal was for us, but whenever we're back to some more normal C, what do you need to welcome back? What are some of those things you missed? You know, one of those things for me is I'm looking forward to when we can gather again. I mean, really gather again, not without our mask and without having to stand six feet apart and have someone spray you down with all the Purell. You know, I'm a germaphobe. I've been a germaphobe, but I'm kind of done being a germaphobe right now. I'm looking forward to when we can gather and worship together again. It's about, I'm, I'm looking forward to when we can get together with our friends and go to a restaurant and the restaurant's actually packed because the food is good and people want to be there. I'm looking forward to a lot of things that we can welcome back. And here's the fourth question. How is it you're pivoting? Because if you're not pivoting, it means that you're staying anchored in a hope that whatever was normal for you before is going to be normal again. And, and I, let me give you the spoiler alert. That ain't going to happen. So how are you pivoting? Because when you're pivoting, it means you're embracing the future. It means you're leaning in to the future. In fact, that's my second suggestion. First is let's get past the past. The second is let's lean into our future. I love the words of Isaiah. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing, a new thing. And see how it springs up? Don't you perceive it? In other words, aren't you looking enough just to see how it's starting to happen? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. Don't you see I'm making a new way? That is God speaking into your life and my life right now in this season, in this moment. Now, traditionally, right, this is New Year. We're headed to January. Remember, January is, it was named after the uh, Roman god Janus. And Janus was a transition god, the, the doorway god, the gateway god. And in fact, how they depicted that God in their statues was a face leaning forward and a face going backward. So the God Janus was a two-faced God, one going forward, one going backwards. And we would traditionally set some resolutions, right? And, and now we were terrible about keeping those, but that was kind of the fun of heading into a new year. Well, whoa, this year's different. This year's different. I mean, we are in transition. It feels real, this doorway we're in from something that we had grown accustomed to, the rhythms we understood, the, the schedule we had a handle on, the normalcy, whatever normal meant for most of our crazy lives, that we could depend on has been flipped on its head. And here's what God says. I am making a new way in the desert, streams in the wasteland. Uh, there is this recognition that there is a desert and a wasteland. There is a recognition that we didn't like what happened. We don't want to be in that place and most of it wasn't very good. But God has always had a way of making something new out of our wasteland. And whether that was a global wasteland or whether that was my own personal mess, my own personal wasteland, God has a way of making things new. He's still in charge. He's still available to us. A way through the desert. Hope in my discouragement. Which really takes me to my third suggestion for us. And it's really simple and it's pretty quick. Let's rely on God. Depend on God. And while I'm assuming we've known that life is fragile, boy, we've learned that on spades. I can't count on my job. I can't count on all my relationships. I can't count on the government. I can't count on the normalcy I've had. I can't count on my health. But I can, I can. I can count on God. I can count on Him. How do you see this string of letters? Some of us look at Him and what we see is God is nowhere. And boy, this last year raised a lot of questions, a lot of doubts, right? Where is God in this? And how come this is happening to us? But some of you who've journeyed with God see those letters in a different way. God is now here. God is now here. And He is. He's in this moment. He's in this season. 
He's living with us in this sustained stress. He's riding with us in this ambiguity. He isn't leaving you alone to face the future or to face this moment. And so let's get past our past and let's lean into the future and let's depend on God, connect with Him, grow in that relationship, depend on Him because, because God is now here. He's here. And there is hope and promise and grace and peace and 2020. I don't ever want to see a repeat, but I don't know what 21's got for me, for all of us, but I'm going to go with God. Let's pray. Father, thank you that we can anchor in you amidst all of our uncertainty. And Lord, for my friends who our stress is high, our depression is getting deeper, and help us to reach out to the people around us. And Lord, help all of us to look to you, to help us establish new rhythms and a new future, and that we don't have to dwell on the past, that you're doing a new thing in the wasteland and help us see it. We thank you for Jesus. We pray in his name. Amen.